welcome to Tech Topics. It is 5.30, so we don't have to wait at all. We can dive right in. My name's Chris, and of course, I'm joined by Tanisha. How are you, Tanisha? I'm really good. I am excited to talk about some big tech news of 2021. Yeah. All right. Well, before we do that, just some a few things up front. Uh, you can ask questions. There's a question section in the control panel. If you're watching on a phone or tablet, there's a question mark icon. Tap that to submit your questions. You're going to receive a survey in your email. Please fill it out and let us know how your experience was. And lastly, this will be posted to our YouTube channel very soon so you can watch it again. All right. Well, now I am going to hand things over to Tanisha and we were, I'll be here in the background, okay? All right. Thank you so much, Chris. So today's topic is going to be a little bit different than the topics that we've covered in the past. So normally we do something directly related to a tech topic like you know, augmented reality, um, adding text to PDF, something like that. But I thought as we um, close out the year 2021, it might be fun to take a look back at some interesting tech stories that happened during this past year. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my camera and let's go ahead and jump right in. So as we always do with our programs, we are going to start you off with a resource shout out. Today's resource shout out is Press Reader. It is a great online essentially warehouse of magazines newspapers and publications that are free with your library card so i went and i browsed the tech section and they literally have dozens of tech magazines they have so many that i couldn't even single out one for this uh for this program so i definitely recommend you check that out um you can follow the link on the screen there hcplc.org slash research to see what tech magazines or any other magazines for that matter or newspapers you'd like to take a look at so we are going to jump right into it and we are going to talk about three big tech stories of 2021 so the first one is space exploration so there's been a lot of really interesting breakthroughs in space exploration in the past year. Um, the first one, in April, the Mars helicopter, Ingenuity, made its first flight on the planet. So this is really big. This is a instrument of flight taking place in an atmosphere that's not Earth. So there's a lot of tech technological advances that have to go into making that happen. And not only did it make its first flight, it has done several flights after that. So just a really huge break breakthrough in terms of space technology and Mars exploration. So something really big that happened back in April. Um, in September, astronaut Sion Proctor became the first African-American woman to pilot a spacecraft. So um, she piloted a SpaceX um, spacecraft. It was for, it was a commercial flight. Um, so it had um, others, it had space tourists on it. Um, a little bit about her back background, she did um, try out for NASA to um, be part of their astronaut program. She didn't quite make it, but she's still a very educated, very um, experienced um, woman in her field, and she was able to um, pilot a spacecraft, so obviously a very talented, very educated person. Um, and that leads us into our next um, thing, big thing that happened, is a lot of people went to space. Um, now, I do know that there's a lot of discussion about whether or not they actually did go to space, like what's considered space, what's considered the Earth's atmosphere, but a lot of people went up into the air. So commercial space travel really began to pick up steam in 2021. Um, of course, there's a little race between um, Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos. They both managed to get up there. Um, also, Captain Kirk, William Shatner managed to get his way up into space. Um, right now, there's a big push for space tourism. Um, it does does have a hefty price tag people are paying a lot of money to get out there but of course um commercial space tourism has a lot of implications for other things so big thing that happened in 2021 so our next story is a little bit more serious but it's still something very important that we should talk about the colonial pipeline cyber attack um that happened this year so in may 2021 um, hackers demanded 4.4 million. They asked for it in Bitcoin. This is what the Bitcoin was worth at the time. I have no idea what it's worth now. Um, from Colonial Pipeline to return stolen data for their computerized equipment. Um, so they stole some data um, 
from the research that I read, it wasn't necessarily directly impacting their day-to-day -day operations, but they shut everything down to contain the attack to figure out who was attacking and to you know, keep their stuff up well. They had to shut it down to keep it up and running. Um, so to contain the attack, the pipeline's operations were stopped, um, impacting gas supply in the southeastern United States. Several airports in Atlanta and other major cities, Raleigh, their um, services were impacted. They weren't able to get all the jet fuel they needed. They had to divert some planes, get their fuel somewhere else. Um, and of course, this was really big in the news, the week-long cutoff, and this is a big part, coupled with panic buying, um, led to the fuel, fuel shortages along the Atlantic seaboard. So from Washington, D.C., all the way down to northern Florida, um, people were, um, along with there being a slight shortage in gas, people were panic buying gas because they thought it would run out. So that was really big in the news at the time. And one of the big implications of why I wanted to include this in um, my discussion today was that this attack led to many conversations about the security of American infrastructure. So a lot of these systems, um, even as sophisticated as they are, run on outdated software. Um, a lot of government things run on softwares. A lot of these things on outdated software, a lot of these things are easy to penetrate and attack. Um, something that is uh, near and dear to county employees is the Kronos um, ransomware attack that just happened, which brought down a lot of payroll applications for a lot of companies, including Tesla, um, big names like that, um, including Hillsborough County. Um, our payment system, um, our payroll system is down. So, you know, we're back to using good old pen and paper because of a ransomware attack on a larger company. Um, so these um, cyber attacks like these have a lot of implications to the day-to-day -day lives to a lot of Americans, whether it be not being able to get gas at the gas station or making sure that your employees get paid on time. So another big story, because it is another because it sparks a lot of conversation, is Facebook becoming meta. So um, social media juggernaut Facebook changed its company name. So Facebook as you know, the social media app or the social media site still exists, but their company name is now Meta because they wanted to pivot towards augmented reality and other technologies. So they didn't want to be simply known as a um, social media company. They want to be known as a technology company. So in order to make that pivot, they wanted to change their name to Meta to get away from the idea of being a social media company. Um, several companies fall in the metaverse. Um, there's Facebook, of course, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Oculus, which is a virtual reality system. Um, now, there is a lot of discussion about why um, exactly are the real reasons behind Facebook doing this. Um, you know, of course, the official reason being that they want to be a tech company, which is a very valid reason, but they've also come under um, if you read the news lately, if you've seen what's going on with Facebook and some of their subsidiaries, a lot of conversation around um, misinformation, um, content moderation, and the mental health of its younger users. So they've been coming under a lot of heat and there's discussion that they may have wanted to rebrand in order to get the company name away from that. But who knows, in any event, this is a big, um, a big thing that's happened in the tech world and also questions about the brand's ubiquity, ubiquity in everyday life. Um, everybody knows what Facebook is. Um, even if you don't have a Facebook account, you still know what Facebook is and what it's there for. Um, and it is a big part. It's how people, fortunately or unfortunately, get a lot of their information. And so the idea of a company like Facebook that has so much power growing to become even bigger does raise a lot of questions about if that's some, you know, it just raises a lot of questions. So bringing things back to the library, because um, we've had a lot of really awesome tech news happen in the past year. So one thing that's near and dear to me as um, someone who's done a lot of tech topics is that the series, the tech topic series, made its debut on January 6, 2021. So that was our very, very first Tech Topics. Um, we did it on smartphone location services. Um, and we also debuted Temas Technologicas, 
which is our Spanish version of Tech Topics in April of 2021. So between um, the English Tech Topics and the Spanish Tech Topics, we have had 61 sessions, including this one. And all of those sessions can be found on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't had a chance to um, review all, you know, if you wanna see what else we've talked about with Tech Topics, I highly recommend you hop on over to our um, YouTube channel to take a look at some other tech topics that we have. And in other library tech news, um, we started circulating GoPros this year and they have been checked out 262 times, which is really great considering that we just started that this year. Uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, which is something else that can be checked out at the library, have been checked out 3,144 times. So really cool. And this number just blows my mind, but you all, we all um, have checked out 2.3 million ebooks, which is a lot of books. So we have, um, as library um, users, since I'm a library user too, and I definitely love my ebooks, we have checked out 2.3 million ebooks. So really big tech news with the library too. We've done some really cool things in the tech um, sphere. And I am going to go ahead and go on to our contact page to see if we have any questions. Chris, I'm gonna go ahead and welcome you back on. And while we are waiting for any questions or comments, if you have a um, tech story or tech news that you wanna talk about, we can definitely include that there. And it does look like we have something. Yes, someone's asking about the shout out again. They wanna know, can you show that one more time? Yeah, absolutely. Let me go back. So it is Press Reader. Um, so if you go to our learning and research page, um, and if you go to newspapers and magazines, I think it's one of the first ones you see, but it's an um, something called Press Reader. It's also a mobile app. So if you have an Android or an Apple tablet um, or a phone, um, you're able to access it on, on your uh, mobile device as well. So I really like it. Um, one of the things that people like it for is that you're able to get the Tampa Bay Times for free using Press Reader, along with like they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of magazines in different languages from different countries. It's just a really cool resource. I think that's it for questions, but I wanted to comment that I can't believe it's been almost a year since the very first tech topics. That's amazing. I know. I can't believe we did 61. <laughs> I know. As somebody who's been on almost every one, I'm, I'm still, except for the Spanish ones, I was not on the Spanish right. ones, but for no. being on the other ones, it's crazy that we've done two, we've done so many and it's great. I'm happy that we were able yeah. to put out this content for everybody. Absolutely. So as we, are wrapping things up. Um, got our contact information if you need to contact us for any reason. Got our uh, phone, email, text, chat, however you would like to contact us, we have that there. Programs and events. And Chris, I know that we are super excited about this. We are so happy to welcome back in-person programming in January. Oh, so you'll yes. be able to go to the library and attend a program once again. Chris and I have been really excited about it. Um, staff have been getting ready for it. So we highly recommend that you check out the calendar, not only for virtual events, because we'll still be continuing to do our virtual events, but check out yep. the calendar for some of those in-person events as well, because that is really big and we are so excited to be bringing you back in-person programming. Yay. <sighs> yes, yay, we get to welcome you all back to the library for programs. And nice. of course, we got our Tech Topics link. Uh, so if you would like to see anything else tech focused, uh, you can follow that link there. Um, also, we're, our theme for January is Near Geary New You, which is science and technology based. So definitely take a look at that. And we again, like we said, we are going to continue our um, virtual program. So virtual programs aren't going away. If you'd still like to uh, join us virtually, we will be here. And our next topic is payment apps. We'll be talking a little bit about that. So if you've heard, I'm sure you've heard Venmo, Cash App, Zelle. We'll be talking about all of those um, and how those work. Um, and we will be doing that program on January 12th. So definitely be sure to join us on January 12th. All right, well, there's no other questions. So I think that's a wrap. Good job. Again, lots of great information. And I hope you have a good night, Tunisia. And I hope everyone who watched had a, also has a good night. And we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, take care.